Welcome back to GBN America with me, Patrick Christie's. Now, Super Tuesday marks a monumental date in the American political calendar. We have primaries, we've got caucuses. But what does all of this really mean? Well, Joe Biden looks as though he's going to run unopposed. How's President Trump doing in the opinion polls? And Nikki Haley appears to have picked up her first win so far in D.C. Now, look, here to pick through all of this with me is Democratic political strategist and attorney. It's Richard Goodstein. Richard, thank you very much for joining us today on GBN America. Now, there was a victory for Nikki Haley in the D.C. primary, her first over Trump. Do we think this matters at all? No. Uh, it's interesting. Historically, it's she's the first woman to ever win a single primary on the Republican side ever. So hats off to her in that regard. But it certainly doesn't mean anything in terms of her overtaking Trump. But what matters, though, I think in all these states is that there's a sizable percentage, 30 percent in some states, almost 40 in others that are voting for her. And of those, a good chunk are saying they will not vote for Trump in a general election. So that's the significance, not her winning the D.C. primary. There were, frankly, uh, thousands of votes, not many cast entirely. But it's the percentage of Republicans that are voting for her who insist do they mean it? We'll see that they simply won't vote for Trump in a general election. That's what's interesting. So it's looking increasingly like it's going to be a Trump versus Biden showdown later on this year. How do you see that panning out? So if you look at the polls, there was one that was ballyhooed a few days ago in The New York Times that had Trump up by five. There were a couple out today that had Biden up. There's YouGov, uh, um, Morning Consult, these are pollsters that are basically doing daily polls and that had Biden up a point or two. I, look, I think it's going to be a dogfight. It's going to come down to um, the few swing states, probably uh, the ones that your audience knows so well, Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, particularly uh, probably Georgia and Arizona, maybe North Carolina. And it, it's no more complicated than that. It means that most of the country of the United States is frankly not the target of what these campaigns are going to um, throw at them. Um, and I think in all those states, it will be very, very, very close. Um, and honestly, I think it's does the fact that the economy is doing so well, crazy high job creation numbers, uh, inflation now two thirds down from what it was at its peak and seemingly dropping. Does that register stock market at all time highs? Does that register or is it still this kind of grumpiness from COVID um, that is is kind of overtaking people? Yeah, I know a lot of people are pouring a bit of cold water anyway over the job creation side of it. I think there was a lot of unemployment due to COVID and now some people getting back into work. So I suppose people can maybe massage some of those figures anyway they want, can't they? But when it comes to America as a whole, all right, is it fair to say you guys have got a choice between someone who might be facing a prison sentence and someone who can't formulate a sentence. Yeah. So your audience is probably familiar with the fact that just recently Donald Trump mistook Nancy Pelosi and Nikki Haley, that he said we might in the future get into World War II. He said that he beat Barack Obama in 2016. So when you say can't formulate a sentence, you're talking about Trump because you could be excused if you were. I, I understand it's it's very um, topical these days to talk about Biden's age. You saw the poll just the other day. Hmm. Six in 10 voters thought that both Trump and Biden were too old. So I think it's going to come down to um, old and crazy versus old and effective. And I actually I think the latter, which is Biden, is ultimately going to be what the country rallies behind, as it has, frankly, ever since 2016, mm -hmm. when the voters have kind of rejected the MAGA Trump approach to things. Is that is that fair, though? Because apparently only 28 percent of Democrats, a new survey here by The New York Times, expressed actual enthusiasm about Biden running again. Apparently 38 percent flatly said that Biden shouldn't be their nominee. I mean, I don't think there is massive pro Biden appetite. There, I do understand that you picked out some examples from Trump there, obviously fair enough. But you know, Donald Trump hasn't been the one falling down airplane stairs and forgetting which day of the week it is, is he? 
Donald Trump said while he was president that an American invented the wheel. Donald Trump just this past weekend garbled words mm. in ways, frankly, that, that did raise questions. You, if you didn't show it, your audience should see him going China and Russia and blah, blah, blah. He, he literally couldn't quite formulate English words. So, yeah, I do understand what you're saying, Rich. I do, I do understand what you're saying with, with respect. But I, I, I think you're doing a valiant job. I think it is actually quite common knowledge, though, that Joe Biden is exhibiting more visible signs of cognitive decline than President Trump. And, and with that in mind, only 28 percent of Democrats apparently actually have enthusiasm about Biden running again. I mean, that's not a great return for for Joe Biden, is it? A year ago at the State of the Union address, when the Republicans in Congress were taunting Biden, unscripted, no teleprompter, no notes, he made them look like fools. That's not what a demented person is capable of doing. So people can make fun of Biden all they want. But when he's, when the lights are on, they actually see him um, governing effectively. They see him pulling together the coalition to stand up to Putin effectively, where Trump is saying to the Russia, knock yourself out, take on uh, these European NATO allies. I mean, does your audience think that's a good thing? Is that what a sound thinking person says? So, yes, I, I, I hear what you're saying about the polls. And I think there's still a lot of Democrats who think maybe it won't even be Biden. But when it is and it will be Biden against Trump, I think ultimately they will decide that having Trump back in the White House is something they cannot abide. So, so you're absolutely convinced that Joe Biden will go for a second term then? You don't think they're going to parachute in Michelle Obama at the last minute? Yeah, I, I think the people who think that are watching too much Fox News. I, I think, that, uh, in fact, I've seen betting odds. I would love to put down money against the prospect of Michelle Obama, frankly, or any other Democrat being the Democratic nominee. It will be Biden. I understand why people somehow have this fantasy as there are, frankly, on the Republican side because of Trump's legal problems and his cognitive decline that they might be somebody else. But it's do not. It's going to be Biden Trump and Biden. Do you think Biden would survive a second term? Do you think, do you think yeah, Biden would survive a second term? Because that is a consideration for people as well, because I suppose then it becomes about the vice president, etc. And, you know, if we're looking at the, the Joe Biden vice president at the moment, I'm not sure that inspires a huge amount of confidence. And, and unfortunately, that is a consideration for people, right? Look, I, I think if you took a, a doctor, you know, somebody who has a real degree and look at Biden's health, eating habits, history, exercise versus Trump doing nothing but eating McDonald's and not moving his body other than sitting in a golf cart. Yeah, I actually think that a internist would tell you they would put better odds on Biden functioning quite well uh, after the end of the next four years than Trump. Yeah, I do. OK, uh, all right. Was he not described recently in some court documents as being you know, an elderly gentleman who doesn't have a particularly good memory? It was described by a Republican Trump loyalist, somebody that Trump picked for the Justice Department, who was named an independent counsel. And he was named an independent counsel to make legal judgments. He's not a doctor. So his assessment, he was just sucking up to Trump by using terms like that. So maybe if Trump wins, he might make... You know, the Trump might make him attorney general. But this is not anything of any legal consequence. Again, people see Biden functioning. They will see him in the State of the Union address uh, in two days. Mm. OK, I mean, they don't see your southern border functioning particularly well, though, do they at the moment? And do you think that Joe Biden has a lot to answer for when it comes to that? I agree. The border is not in great shape. And there's one party and one party only that's committed to fixing it. And that's the Democrats. And how do we know that? Because a bipartisan deal was reached in the Senate. The lead Senate negotiator for the Republicans was extraordinarily conservative gentleman from uh, Oklahoma of Southern state. And um, the Democrats rallied behind it. And the Republicans would have, well, until wait, Biden, uh, Trump said to them, don't. I'd rather have the issue to run on rather than a solution. And I think the public can see clearly that Biden and the Democrats want this addressed. And it can only be addressed legislatively because, frankly, if it was, could be done with regulations, Trump would have done it. And he didn't. He didn't build his wall. He didn't stop the inflow of migrants. 
So I think that it's obvious what's going on here, which is the Democrats want a solution. The Republicans want an issue to run on. And just like they ran against um, caravans in 2018, an issue, frankly, that went away after the election day, I I think the public can see what's going on. I think from, from, from an outsider like myself sitting over here thousands of miles away, it seems difficult for me to understand that the Democrats want a solution when it seems like they are ready and willing to give people financial allowances, even if they've come to the country illegally, allow them to go to a city of their own destination, allow them to live sometimes better than US citizens do as well. Do you understand how maybe that looks as though it's an act of encouragement for people entering illegally as opposed to a proper desire to actually stop that problem? What you just articulated was the policies, the law, when Trump was president. So you're you're positing something that's just not true. It's not like the Democrats are advancing policies about taking care of people that migrate into the United States that were any different between 2017 have, and 2021 when Trump point. left. We're, 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 yeah, F- fair enough. But I mean, we're, but we're, Trump we're didn't stop it either. They haven't stopped them, have they? Trump didn't stop it either. Is my point that that you know we have laws in this country. You know we could have people come in and have them starve. In fact, what we see from every economist is the reason that a year ago every single economist was forecasting a recession in the United States, and we have not had one, and we won't, is in part because migrants are a shot in the arm to the United States economically. It's not politically popular to say that, but it's true. So I think there's a reason we want to make sure that if migrants get into the United States, they get put to work. And thankfully, we now have a much more robust economy than most of our um, European competitors. All right, Richard, look, thank you very much. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. It's been great to get your insight and I really hope to catch up with you again. Thank you. As this general election does loom large. That's Richard Goodstein there, Washington, D.C. D.C. Well, with the Democratic President Joe Biden and former Republican President Donald Trump looking as though they are going to be going at it again this year unopposed and Super Tuesday taking place pretty much as I speak, there are so many stats, so many polls and so many numbers to crunch. I think I need a top pollster and here to do it is James Johnson, part of JL Pollsters and also he used to run the polling data for Downing Street. James, thank you very much for joining us here at GBN America. Now, Super Tuesday. It's happening. What are your predictions? This is going to be a wipeout for Nikki Haley, I think, and a very successful night for Donald Trump. Um, He's got double-digit leads in a huge number of these states that go to the polls today. And not only that, a significant number, more than half of them, award their delegates on a winner-takes-all basis. And what that means is that all of their delegates are awarded regardless of who wins the primary, um, even if Donald Trump only wins it by a small margin or in some states like California gets over 50%, which he is set to do. Now, Nikki Haley might have a chance in a couple of states like Vermont and Virginia, where the polling is a bit tighter. Um, But look, there's only one conclusion from today, and it really makes it one of the more boring Super Tuesdays in in recent uh, years, which is that Donald Trump has the ascendancy already, and this will be potentially his crowning moment um, and the end of the contest uh, in this Republican primary. What are the big issues for people, Okay, Is it all about immigration? So when we ask Republican primary voters, what is the biggest issue? It is immigration. Um, It is the border. um, It's the illegal crossings across the border. It's a sense of unfairness. It's a sense of, you know, people feel like they've uh, paid into the system. They feel like they've seen, you know, that veterans who have worked very hard are now now homeless. Uh, have have sort of given given into the system and society, but they're seeing people crossing the border illegally and reaping the rewards of society where those people, those hardworking people haven't. And that's really caused a lot of frustration in the country. Of course, those numbers have gone up a great deal since Biden uh, took over. And that's also created, created a real sense of frustration. Lots of people are quite simply sitting back and saying in the general electorate, as well as in the primary electorate, are simply sitting back and saying things were better on the border, things were better on the economy under Donald Trump than they were under Joe Biden. And in that Republican primary audience, Donald Trump, he goes on the stage. I've seen Donald Trump speak twice this year already in Iowa and at CPAC um, uh, with Nigel Farage a couple of weeks ago. And every single time uh, he says, you know, my number one priority is to seal the border. So they know he's got a strong position on it. And it's something that he's been able to use very effectively to clinch these votes uh, in the run up to today. 
I've just spoken to a democratic strategist who told me point blank that the, the people of America can see that there's only one party that wants to sort the border issue out. That's the Democrats. They can see that things didn't get any better under Trump and that Joe Biden is smashing it when it comes to employment rates and when it comes to inflation. Is that true? Well, I'd like some of what they're smoking. Um, that's uh, definitely not the case as the public see it in America. Um, they see uh, they see the border situation as being a lot worse under Biden than they see it under Trump. Now, look, Trump was a bit lucky there, right? You know, he, he, he inherited a situation which was better than the one that, that Biden's got. He obviously had the pandemic, which just by its very nature reduced the number of border crossings. Um, but there's absolutely no bad doubt about it that in that first month or so of Joe Biden taking office, he signed a number of executive orders that loosened rules on the border. Um, and that is now com coming home to roost for Joe Biden. Um, and Trump is able to use that attack line very convincingly. So look, you know, if Democrats, if individual Democrat candidates prove that they can take action on the border, maybe they can lance that boil a little bit come November. But the overall picture is that Biden is seen as less trusted on the border uh, than Donald Trump. And that's outweighing some of those long-term concerns out there um, about about Trump's temperament for, the, for, for office. Yes, they think he's dramatic. Yes, they think he's a tough, a tough guy. Yes, they think he can be a bit rude and aggressive, but they also feel he can get things done. And that's rude when it comes to that issue. Mm. Where are we at with uncommitted voters on either side at the moment, do you think? Well, if there's one thing about this election, it's that uh, I don't think anybody can say that they don't know much about one of the candidates. Um, both have been president, um, and that leaves you with a pretty small number of people who aren't really sure uh, how they're going to vote. Having said that, there are a number of people who are in the middle uh, in this contest. Um, and because the margins are so small in these swing states, places like Georgia, Arizona, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Michigan, those people will make a big difference uh, come the election. And um, we sometimes call them independents. Actually, a lot of independents who say they're independent tend to vote for one party. Um, so uh, when we drill into that group beyond that group, the sort of uncommitted independents, so to speak, we do see Donald Trump with a narrow advantage. Now, a year ago, Joe Biden had the narrow advantage with that group. And a few things have happened there, but number one are con is concerns about Joe Biden's age. They simply look at this president and they think, how can this guy run the country when he's 86 years old? How, which is what he'll be at the end of his second term. How can this man still be president in, on the 1st of January 2029 um, when he would still be in office if he completed a full second term? That just simply doesn't feel like it's possible to voters. And it's that common sense thing mm. which is really hurting Joe Biden's candidacy at the moment. Yeah, and uh, voters are seeing... Yeah, you know, quite a different Joe Biden, maybe than the than the kind of fiery man that they actually wanted, and the passionate man that they actually wanted. Is there any any chance, in your opinion, that at some point some of the the Democrats behind the scenes might put their arm around Joe Biden and say, "Look, thank you for your service, Joe, but there's someone else here waiting in the wings, and and they're polling brilliantly, and we could have Michelle Obama, and we could have her for four years." It's something that I think a lot of people are still asking. I think if we'd have seen it, we would have seen it by now. We've now got the primary season underway and we've got Joe Biden with a big lead in delegates. The big question is what happens at that Democratic National Convention? Is there going to be an uprising against Joe Biden? Look, I find it hard to see how the numbers work there because what is the event that gets 60 percent of Joe Biden's delegates to go against him? Um, I just can't see what that would be that would unlock them. You know, maybe it's a health event. Maybe it's, uh, it's something like that. But at the moment, you know, Biden has that loyalty. It's a little bit like people usually say in the UK. They say, you know, the Labour Party is not so good at removing leaders as the Conservative Party are. We're seeing that with the Democrats. Are they really ruthless enough to make the jump? I don't think so. One caveat, though, if Joe Biden decides to pull out himself. Um, and Jill Biden, his wife, is also a key player in this, the first lady. If they both decide, actually, we can do this, then I think we will see that open convention. But at the moment, Joe Biden has a grip on the Democratic Party. And Patrick, he's helped by one other dimension, which is Kamala Harris. If there's one politician in America who's less popular than Joe Biden, it's Joe Biden's running mate, Kamala Harris. Bad for the Democrats, good for Biden, because it means he doesn't have an immediate opponent. Yeah, it's absolutely staggering looking at it from this side of the pond and thinking, you know, America, this genuinely great country and this genuinely great ally of ours, 
here and you know we're talking such terms about the two of the potential presidential candidates can i just ask you quickly before i let you get going the race for vp is heating up apparently so we've got christy no and we've got uh, lee stefanik as well edging up the rankings i've got it here in front of me uh, with the republican nomination essentially settled and the conference became a catwalk for those vying for trump's vice presidential slot who's your money on what do the polls say well, the answer is no one knows. Uh, you talk to Trump's team, you talk to people around Trump, they don't know. Um, I'm not convinced that Donald Trump knows just yet. Um, uh, Christy Noem and Elise Stefanik are where I currently put my put my money. But look, we could even, this is Donald Trump. He loves to spring a surprise. He loves a headline. Um, he loves something to, uh, you know, knock the media off, uh, off of their expectations. So, you know, we could even see, um, you know, a shock appointment. Perhaps we could see, uh, you know, the great, the great coming together. Perhaps he still appoints Nikki Haley as VP. Perhaps it's Ron DeSantis, you know, coming out of the, of the woodwork. But um, I think what we can say is that it looks more likely to be Christy Noem and Elise Stefanik. But the truth is, Patrick, no one knows. Well, James, thank you very, very much for your time today. And I'm sure we'll be talking again before the uh, election is out. And it would certainly be great to pick your brains once more. That is James Johnson there, who's the co-founder of the pollster JL Partners. And formerly, as well, uh, working somewhere much closer to where I am now in Downing Street. James, thank you very much. Take care. That was James Johnson of JL Partners. For the latest on the presidential election, make sure that you go to gbnews.com forward slash America.